Hello, everybody, and welcome. It's time for another Bead Spider live tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make a gorgeous Tree of Life pendant. So, this particular design, the great thing about it, it's really, really simple and easy. But the best thing is, it's almost one of those projects that the the sort of the uglier you do it, the more organic and nature-like it looks, and in turn, sort of almost looks better for it. So it's kind of counterintuitively that um, even if you are a complete beginner, just by your inability of skills, you'll probably make a great looking tree just because nature isn't very neat and precise and organized in that sort of a way. So it actually ends up being a really, really great, simple beginner's project and a nice place to start if you've never done much jewelry or wire work stuff before. So we're going to get on with that one today. I'm going to be using two different sizes of the jewelry wire, artistic jewelry wire, which I can never remember the gauge numbers. So I've got one mil, one millimeter thick wire and 0 0.4 millimeter thick wire. So anyone who is there with their quick Google fingers uh, and wants to check out what one mil and the 0 0.4 millimeter wire sizes are in gauge, uh, I'll let people know. So I'll keep an eye out for those as well. We're also going to be using uh, some gemstone chip beads, which are lovely, lovely, gorgeous, rich, natural beads. They come in a whole variety of different colors because they are natural stones, essentially, um, which we have a kit as well. If you want to go and check out the links down below in the description, uh, you can go and grab the kit. There are four different color options to choose from. And we actually have a deal that if you buy any three or more, you get 20% off. So it's like our little introductory sale that we often do, that when you buy one, it's full price. When you buy two, it's full price. But if you buy three or all four or even more, you can buy any three or more that you like, you get 20% off. So if you want to check that out, click the link in the description. I'll show you how the product itself works, uh, just because it can be a little bit difficult sometimes. Uh, so I'll show you that a bit later on. But anyway, who have we got joining us already? I see we've already got around about 40 people in total across both Facebook and YouTube, which is fantastic. Thank you all very much for joining. Um, let's see. David was first cab off the rank. He said, hello, I will be here, but he's busy working in the background. So uh, even if you're like David and you can't watch live right now, you can always Watch the catch up. This will be available after the stream that you can go and watch whenever you fancy, be it today, tomorrow, or in five years um, from now, you'll still be able to watch it uh, here on YouTube or Facebook. But anyway, um, we also have Trish. We have Gail. She said, I already ordered the kits for this project. Can't wait to see the tutorial. Well, I'm glad. Uh, thank you so much for shopping with us already, being so prepared. Um, and hopefully you'll enjoy the tutorial. Andrew is here as well. Mum and Dad are watching. They say uh, Mum and Jan are watching from on board the cruise ship. Uh, I don't know if some of you might know Jan Alston from the chat. They happen to be on the same cruise at the same time. Uh, so they're watching together. So I'm glad they could be here. Renske is here as well um, from Holland, if I recall correctly, the Netherlands. Um, Carol says hi over on Facebook. We have Angelica. Irina is here from Croatia, if I remember. Um, Nicole is here as well. Then we have Patricia. Uh, Esther has commented in one mil wire is 18 gauge and 0 0.4 wire is 26 gauge. So, um, I will tell you how much exactly we need of each of those, but we'll get into that. Amber is also here from Alabama, and Stacy is here from Ohio as well. Now, another thing I want you guys to do, comment in just below and let me know which of the colors that you like best. So I'll show you what the different colors that we have of the kit very, very quickly uh, over on the website. So if you click the link in the description, it'll take you to the Bead Spider website where you can see the kit just here. This is an example of what one would look like. But if you click just here, view the kit, you can see we have this. Here's today's tutorial. But just below, we have the 
Autumn Harvest one, which has the Mookite and the Botswana Agate. We have the Enchanted Forest, which is the Rose uh, rose Quartz and the Amethyst. I'm going to show you what these look like in real life. The Garden of Eden is this one here, which has the Fancy Jasper and the Aventurine. And then we also have one which I'm going to be demonstrating with today, the Sodalite and the Turquoise Howlite just there in blue. And then just here, any three or more, 20% off. Just click on that button there, choose the three that you like, and you'll get 20% off. Right, that is all I'm going to say for now in terms of the actual shopping part. Uh, but in terms of actually how we're going to make these fellas, let's just get it over to the screen so you can see what the gemstones for starters this for some reason the camera always makes things that are like turquoisey blue look greener this bead is actually very very similarly colored to my shirt if you have a look there you can see it it's really similar color to my shirt but for some reason this camera makes it look a bit greener i don't know why it's just this camera uh, that one comes with this one, which is the one I'm going to be demonstrating with, which is that gorgeous deep blue soda light color just here. Uh, these are the Mookite and the Botswana Agate ones, which here is what the Mookite looks like all made up. Unfortunately, I was trying to get a photo image perfect. I took a really lovely photo this morning of the Mookite one as a bag charm, but unfortunately, I uh, didn't manage to get the photo ready in time. So I do have the finished piece, but not the the lovely photo of it on with Maxine's bag. Uh, and then this one here is from our Green Garden of Eden set, which are these two stones here. You've got the Fancy Jasper, and you have the Aventurine as well. Again, this one, it looks kind of greener than it is. Uh, it's a little bit... Um, more desaturated than what the camera would lead you to believe. It's like a really nice bluey green color. It's not quite so light green as that. And then, of course, we have our amethyst and rose quartz, which look fabulous together as well. So anyway, I'm going to be making with the sodalite, I think, unless I want to make an amethyst one. What do you reckon? Should I use the sodalite or the amethyst? But either way, comment in and tell me which of the color combinations you like best. So this one was the uh, the blue moon, the autumn harvest, the garden of Eden, and then we had the enchanted forest. Which color is your favorite combination? And which one should I demonstrate out of the amethyst and the uh, and the soda light? Which one do you reckon I should I should do? If you comment in and tell me which one you want me to demo with, I'll do it like that. But anyway, do let me know which one is your favorite. So yeah, first things first. The what what we're going to be doing is making the outside of our pendant shape. So you can see here, there's two different ways that you can do it. I'm going to show you the simple way, which is to just do it as a plain round. You can also, if you want to, which I have done on this one, do it where it's twisted. See like that? If you prefer it to have a twisted outer edge, you can do that. Uh, but I'm going to just show you how to do the, the single plane edge, edge. It's pretty much exactly the same. You just have to fold the wire in half and then twist it even all the way down so that you've got like a nice loop. And then you would begin in the exact same way that you would work this single round piece like this one just here. So anyway, this is the zero, uh, the one mil wire, which I think someone said it was 14, 16 gauge. Where was that? Uh, what did they say? Here we go. Esther said it was 18, the 18 gauge. So we're going to start with 18 gauge, which is one millimeter wire. And then all of this here in the core that goes through our beads and all of this, this is our 0 0.4 millimeter wire. So uh, we start by making our outer edge first. And then once we've done that, uh, we can sort of start adding our little tree section. Now, the what you need to do, what you need to get to start with, once you've got yourself a piece of your 18 gauge slash one mil wire, uh, you might want to use in terms of tools. Uh, let me just grab out my little 
bead pouch here. You might need some wire straighteners. These are very useful for making the wire really smooth and really nice. We're going to need our cutting tools, cutting pliers like this as well. And maybe some gripping pliers are going to be useful as well. So these ones, see how they've got like a nice big edge? You could use either of these style just here. It doesn't matter which. If you prefer the chain nose, which comes to a tip, or the sort of the bigger gripping pliers, that's fine. And then this we're going to use for the loop at the top of our little work as well. So these are round nose pliers. So we're using quite a few of our different tools today. Uh, but what we're also going to need is something that's going to give us that nice round shape. So first things first, just have a look around the house uh, and see what you have. And I found the perfect thing for my, uh, for my thing just here, which is, wait a minute, that little ticker needs to disappear. Where have you gone? There we are. There we go. Let's just pop that back in. There we go. Uh, so yes, I have myself a lovely jar of Vegemite. I thought it was about the right sort of size. I thought it was a perfect size for doing this particular thing, but you can use like a deodorant can. You can use like a little piece of piping, uh, like a plastic PVC pipe if you have something like that. Um, something that's around about two inches, four centimeters or so across about there is a, a good size. You can go bigger if you want to, but you might struggle for the number of beads. You can go less if you want to and make it even smaller. That's not a problem. But I personally think that this is a lovely good size and is going to give us a perfect size pendant. So this one here was made with this little Vegemite tube as my sizing. If you have a look, you can see it's the width of pretty much the, the tube there. So we're going to go through. I'll show you how I've done that. We'll twist it. We're going to make our framework first. And then once we've done that, we'll make our tree shape and start actually adding in the, the beads while we're doing that. So first things first, grab yourself your 0 0.1, uh, your 1 mil, sorry, 18 gauge wire. And if you want to use them, your wire straighteners just here, you can just very gently just pull it through them like this and try and get rid of any of these sort of bumps and lumps and edges like that, just so it's nice and smooth. Plus this hardening, uh, this will also help harden the wire a little bit, not very much, but a little, um, which also helps it to keep a nice firm shape when you're doing that too. So just give it a little bit of a straighten, get it nice and smooth like that. And then once you're happy with it, which it didn't need much, it's pretty good now, we're going to take our jar of Vegemite or whatever other condiments are available, of course. You know, if this was live TV, I would have to say that, but thankfully not. Um, oh, wow, there's lots of comments coming in. I've just realized I missed quite a lot of them. I'll have to go back and check on some of those. So anyway, once you've got your, your jar, we're going to just wrap our wire around it. Something like this will do, and just give it like a little crossover shape. So if you can hold it nice and firm against your jar, like that, get it to this sort of point. And ideally, if we use our gripping pliers at this sort of point, I'll try and show it to you if I can, see where this sort of crosses over. Grab your gripping pliers at that point. So just like so, Ooh, didn't quite grab it, there we go. Get it a little bit tighter if you can. So just feed one edge through until you have a relatively tight little loop and in your pliers. So we'll hold them together now. Get it a little bit tighter, I think. There we go. And hold it at the crossover point. And do you know what you can do? You can twist the whole jar, which I'll just make it a little tighter. I'll tell you, it's, I'm, I'm not making this easy for me. Whenever I do this previously, it's been like no problems whatsoever. But as soon as you start trying to do something live, that's when uh, that's when it just doesn't want to behave for you. 
very funny. I guess it's because I'm trying to hold it a different way than I usually would. So there you go. I've got it with two hands now. Grip it like that at that point. Like so. And you can just twist the two wires to each other. I just realized I've got it completely out of position. Let's, do you know what? Let's just do it the slightly more manual way with my fingers to start with. And we'll just twist the two together. There we go. That'll give me something to grip onto now with my pliers. And then we can just twist the entire jar. The whole jar twists and gives you a nice clean little twist like that. There we go. Oh, I twisted it the wrong direction. Oh my goodness. What is going on with me today? I tell you, I'm having one of those days, aren't I? Let's just get that again. I tell you, this one's going to be a blooper reel today. There we go. Hold it in place. Give it a twist. There we go. I should have just done it with my hands all along. And there you go. That will give you that nice round pendanty shape. And if you have this relatively tight, so if you have a look, see how I've got this almost at like right angles to each other? That gives you a much tighter loop when you do your twisting. If you have them at a steeper angle, this little twisted section here won't be nearly as neat. So you want to have it almost perfectly at a right angle and then just slowly take your time. And if you want to, you can create a loop that goes all the way up here and you can have like a, a looped top similar to this. One just here. See how the looping goes if it'll focus. See how the looping, the twisting goes all the way up the twist? You can do that if you want to. Otherwise, you can just do it at the base and then create your loop with just plain wire if you prefer. It's up to you how you want to do it. But I personally quite like doing the twist all the way up. So I'm going to twist it a little bit more and a little bit more like so, just to give myself enough to make that little loop shape. And it works quite quickly, quite nicely. And as I said, you can either twist your jar or twist your fingers. Either one, it's exactly the same. If you're twisting with your fingers, you can sort of, uh, sorry, when you're twisting the jar, you can probably get a more accurate and even twist. But if you find doing it with your fingers is easier, you can do that too. So there you go. Let's just Put it about there for now, and then I'm going to just cut myself off this little piece just here, which I can cut more later. And then on here, we have our perfect size, which I'll zoom on out, little circle. And just let me just turn this so it's in a slightly different direction rather than in the same direction, so it'll lay flat. There we go. And you can see I've got my lovely circle shape now. If you're not happy with it, you can always re-put it on the jar, get it nice and firm like that, sort of twist it around a bit, and that will help it to keep its shape a little bit better, just like that there. Take it off. And there you go. You can see you've got a lovely round circular shape. Now, at this point just here, we're going to be attaching our wires to the base. And with that, uh, we will sort of be making the base structure. If you prefer, you can also do your little coiling loop part at this point as well. So depending on if you want your loop to hang in this direction or you want it to hang in that direction, you can decide that right now. And then once you're doing that, um, it's up to you. The process is literally exactly the same, where you just grab your round nose pliers. You want to use a size that is relatively large towards the base, and then you can just fold it in whichever way you think is best. So I'm personally going to do this one like I have done this one here, just because it works nicely with the bag charm. Um, if you want to do it as a pendant, you might prefer to do it the other direction, but I'm doing it in this way, and you can literally just fold it over. Again, you can use your fingers, or you can do it with your, um, your hands, like so, and just try and get it into a nice curve shape around the top just here. 
into that lovely shape and see how I've got all this excess stuff which we can cut off. We can give that uh, a little chop in a second once we have our nice shape. And where are my pliers? Just to coax it into position a bit more. Oops. To make a lovely, nice big loop. Which, do you know what? I might just squeeze that on down to about there. And then we can just chop off the excess because that makes it on loopable. Or you can attach this to the top. It's up to you just if you want to close that over. You might want to wrap it around here once or twice just to help make sure that that little loop stays completely closed permanently. So I'll just wrap it once around here just to make sure it stays nice and closed, which I can use my pliers to help me grab it as well. Get it wrapped around there. There we go. And we can cut off the excess on this one down here. which it's now hidden there. And you can see you've got relatively, I didn't cut off the excess of my other piece. Let's get rid of that too. My other little one just in there. There we go. From my other wire that I did at the wrapping, I should have done it a bit earlier on that. Doesn't matter. There we go. And there we are. We have our little loop section here at the top. And we have our round piece. And if you find you need to re-straighten it again on your little thing, you can stick it back onto your jar if you want to. But if you're happy with the shape, then just continue. Next, what you're going to do is grab yourself a little bit of your 0 0.4 wire here. So my 0 0.4 millimeter wire, which I think someone said it was 26 gauge, we're going to attach five little pieces to the base here, which is going to be part of our root structure, as it were. So what you need is to measure about 12 inches. I'm just going to eyeball it, 30 centimeters or 12 inches. And bring in your cutters. And just give that a little snip around about there. You're going to need a total of five pieces of this size. So 12 inches times five, uh, 30 centimeters times five. And what we'll do is just fold them in half because it's going to give us two of our little pieces on our base. So the first one, I'll just do the first one very quickly. And luckily I have one that I made earlier so that we can jump ahead. But essentially just get the middle to the bottom of your work like this and just twist them around that little metal just here. So see that on there? You can see just here at the base, I've just got that nice and firmly wrapped around, and I'm going to take it around about five times. So once, twice, three times, because I want to keep it relatively central, it's hardly going to make a difference, but I'll use the other wire now too. So just push them all together, all of those little coils to keep them neat. And then I'll wrap the second wire once, take it through, and maybe one more. And you can see that gives me now this nice, if it'll focus, come on. There you go. Look at that. We have, maybe I can zoom in on it a bit more. A nice coil. Ah, so close. The zoom was working so nicely. Let's see if I can try it one more time. There you go. So we've got inside here all these wires neatly coiled around our work. So what we're going to do with this, we can just bring them both up to the top, keep them together like that. And luckily, you can just slide them around your work up to the top to where you've made your loop. And then you would grab a second piece and you would do another, and then the third one, and the fourth one, and the fifth one, until eventually you have attached five of them. See, so I've got 
one wrapped around, two wrapped around, three, four, and five. Now, this uh, set of five wires is going to give us our root structure for our design. So if we want to bring them on down, now it's up to you how you want to do this. There's two different ways. So the first one is that you separate them really, really wide. See how I've got them like all the way out here and all the way out here and sort of thing. And it's sort of, I've done them intentionally, not very evenly spaced either because it looks a bit more organic, a bit more neat. Uh, we can also do them a little bit closer together if you like. See, look, this one, I've done it way, way less width. So the width of this one is about that width compared to doing this one, a whole extra thing there. So if you prefer the, loop, the, the roots to be a little bit closer together, you can do that. If you prefer them a little bit further apart, you can spread them apart as well. So basically, we want to put one approximately in the center of our little loop, like so, and then sort of separate them out to, if you want them close, have them close. If you want them far, have them far. It doesn't matter too much. You can reposition them a bit later as well. Plus, if they move around while you're doing this, it doesn't matter because, as I said again, you can just move them around a bit later on as well. So let's just pinch them all together. Something like this. So just sort of bring them all roughly to one point. And we're going to hold them all together. And you can use your pliers to do this if you prefer. But we're going to just give it a nice little twist to bring all those wires together. Now, at this point, you know how I told you you can move them around? You still can. They're still movable. See that? So you can make them wider. You can make them closer. You can do whatever you want with them. Position them how you see fit. Smush it down a bit even if you wanted to, sort of to get a, a nice shape happening. Whatever you like, it's entirely up to you. You can sort of bend it that way, bend it upwards, sort of make it ugly, make it messy, make it look natural. This is why I said to you at the beginning, it's one of those great projects that even if you do it really messy, that helps because it it's more natural looking. So see that? I've made a big fat giant mess out of it on purpose uh, just because then it really does look sort of like this intertwining root system at the base of a tree. So now we can just continue sort of twisting them all together. If you don't want to reduce the size of your root structure anymore, you go, yep, I'm happy with the size of my roots. Pinch it at the base of that root structure and then just keep twisting them up the top here like this. So if you do it straight for a little bit, like so, it'll give you your sort of this is going to become the, the middle of our work. So you can either bend it, maybe say this direction, and then give it like a maybe a curvature at the base, give it another curve if you want it to, just like something that you think looks like a nice organic tree shape. Plus something else you can do as well is just untwist the wire in some places just to sort of loosen the... Uh, the twist. So if you grab your pliers, maybe just hold the two points where you want it to become a little bit looser between and just untwist it maybe once or so. When you've done that, you can see it thickens it a bit and makes it look a bit more like knots in a tree, you know, that sort of thing. You can sort of play with that design, play with the shape, get it looking exactly how you want it, untwist it in places where you want it to look a little thicker. See like that there, see how it's like a bit thicker here now? Just by making it a bit looser in places, tighter in other ones, it will give you all different texture throughout your tree. So again, even if you're not a very good wire worker, it will help to give it that organic look because where you have loose parts, it'll look thicker. Where you have tight parts, it'll look thinner. And it all comes together very, very easily like that there. Let's maybe give it a couple more twists. We can sort of position it a bit more down. You can always push it downwards if you want to. And then when you're happy with the shape, 
let's say let's say something like like this what do you think i think that's a fun shape you can then separate your wires out k says i can see me breaking that i'd be surprised if you have all 10 of these wires together i think you'll find it'll be quite difficult to, to break them. Now, at this point, you can either separate, try and find wires that are close to each other to separate them, or you can find ones that are not close to each other, because then, again, it's going to give you that more organic shape. So if you want them close together, you can have them co close together. If you want them far apart, choose some of the wires that are not so close to each other. So for example, see these two, they're already close to each other. You can choose those ones together if you want to. And Let's grab maybe, just sort of separate them all from one another. I'll be amazed if you break the wire. It's uh, a lot more sturdy than you would think. It's a very, very firm, sturdy wire in this instance. The only way you would break it is by over-twisting, which uh, is quite difficult if you're doing it with your hands. I should say. So there you go. We're starting to make our tree shape now. So we have these ones here. Let's say these two. And I'll grab this one and this one. Let's take them together. And we'll take these two together. And we have these two. And maybe let's put that one with this, possibly. Yeah, that one's out there. There we go. So we can sort of separate them a little bit. It doesn't need to be in exact locations yet. And now is for the relatively easy and fun part. Do you know what? I might twist them maybe just a little bit more in places. Keep them separated, but just to make my tree a little bit taller in my thing. There we go. Separate them back out now. Good. Yeah, that's nice. So now we can sort of play with our shape. Let's get it sitting here. Maybe I'll have some around here, some around here, something like this. And now we can start adding on there. I think this is coming together nicely, that it'll sort of come down here, maybe finish up there. We can start adding on our beads. So I will work with, I can't remember which color people voted for. Oh, well, I'm going to use the blue one, I think. Let's go with this one here, just because I really like this one. This one is my personal fave. So just pour your beads out onto your bead mat here, and then we're going to just thread them on one by one. So there's two different ways you can do this. Either start in the middle and work outwards, or start at one side and work across. It makes literally no difference, but it definitely helps if you go from one to the other or the middle outwards. Don't do like one here, then one there, then one here and one there, because it will be difficult. Sort of do it in a way that you do one, then the next one to it, then the one next to it, and the one next to it, and so forth. That I find works much better. So once you've got that, we can start threading on our beads, which we don't need huge, ah, sorry, which we need to start twisting these together to make our branch bits. So just grab your first two. And just give them a first nice little couple of twists with each other to give it a nice little branch shape. Something around here will do. And we'll separate them back out. And we'll grab our first beads now. So we'll do these two here into this one. And then pick up another one. And you'll find it doesn't take very long now once we've got to this point. Once you have your, your main structure, you can sort of pull it and shape it and twist things until you're really happy with how it's all looking. So let's just pop that on there. And I think that's probably about enough. You could add maybe one more. Why not? One more little bead on there, just to make it a little bit closer. And then we're going to just wrap that wire once, twice, three times. And if you have a look, the way I do this 
because you want it to have a relatively close, tight little bit just there. Pull it like so, and then in that sort of direction towards your work. Then pull this one down and up like that there. And once you've got it over here at the back, you can bring in your cutters and just give that a little snip and just flatten that down if you need to with your pliers. And that'll sort of help get the shape looking really nice. There we go. And that gives us one first little branch, nice clean little wrap just there. Uh, and we'll fix these little bits right at the end to lock them in place. Next, we'll do our next little branch piece just here. So let's go and fill this one up. And again, the whole time, you can sort of be playing with the shape of all of your leaves and branches and sort of getting it looking really neat and, uh, sorry, really organic and not so neat. Um, more natural shapes and bends and curves, just so it looks, you know, more like nature than, than perfectly symmetrical, perfectly bent, you know. We kind of don't want that. So let's go like this. And if you have a look, you can bend your wire up a little, get them in different directions, curve it around. You know, I could separate them, put them closer together. But once you're sort of happy with that position, we're going to lock this one in place. So again, wrap that down there and get it nice and tight just here. Wrap it again. If it's moving around, don't worry, because it will continue to move until we squeeze them at the very end. Wrap it once more. And once it's towards the back, we can bring in our cutters, flip it over, and cover it, of course. And then just cut that off. And now slide it back into position. There you go. Now we'll take our next two wires, and we will twist them together to make this branch sort of shape. There we go. Gives us a nice little twist there. That's a nice little branch. And we will separate one, separate the other. And now we can do the same process of adding on our beads. So let's grab a few more. And I'm going to just blast through this. So if anyone has any questions or anything um, that they want to know about, now is a great time. Actually, speaking of which, uh, I should mention we have, while I'm doing this, uh, our beading competition running at the minute. So if you haven't heard about that, we are running our Crystal Magic beading competition, which it is free to enter completely. Um, if you would like to, you can just go to the Bead Spider website. I'm going to put a link in the description. I realized I didn't put one in. But if you go to the Bead Spider website on the Bead Spider homepage, uh, the competition is just scroll down a little bit. So if we look on the website homepage just once more, I'll take you back to it. So if we come back to the Bead Spider homepage website, you can just scroll down from here. So just scroll down a little bit past here. And here you are, Crystal Magic Beaded Competition. Enter now. If you click on that, I'm going to try and put a link in the description uh, for when you do that. You can just click on there to enter the competition. It'll take you down. But there's 200 pounds worth of prizes to be won. Um, all of the details are just here on the left. But over here on the right, you can enter. You put your name, your email address, you answer the question, more or less, just so that we know that you're a real person. Uh, and if you want to, you can get a £5 voucher if you're not already on our email list by ticking that. And then when you enter, uh, you will be given... Uh, first, you will be entered into the lucky prize draw, which everybody who enters the competition goes into the draw to win. Uh, there's two different £50 vouchers to be won. Um so every person who enters, you can read it all here. But we also have everyone who enters three special val uh, three special deals just for the people who enter. So if you haven't uh, entered, I'm not going to tell you what the the special deals are necessarily. But 
If you go and enter, there's three special deals, including an exclusive product only available to people who enter our competition. Um, if you were going to go and check that out, there's uh, three special deals, as I said, for the people who join the competition. So anyway, I'm going to just keep going with this process now. Any other questions did that anybody had uh, while, while we're going just here? What do we think of the blue, by the way? I really like this color. I think it's like such a rich blue. It's um, quite a gorgeous color. It's like, it almost looks like lapis, uh, lapis lazuli, but it is in fact sodalite, which I personally am a bigger fan of sodalite just because it has this sort of mottliness to it, like a gray mottle all the way through. Um, Christine says, it looks really good. What gauge of wire did you use? I joined late. Uh, we're using 18 gauge wire for the outside and 26 gauge wire for the actual tree part of our design there. That's for Christine. Uh, so yeah, the blue is coming along nicely. This one is from the Moon Moon River, I think was the name, kit, which I think was a, it sort of makes me think of like a, a hidden, sort of a hidden glen, you know, like um, the movie, um, what's it called? Avatar, you know, the Avatar movies, how there's that big tree, which they all pray to. This kind of this blue color makes me think of, of that tree from, from the Avatar movies. I don't know about you, but that's what it makes me think of. What are, what are you guys? What do you guys, what does it make you think of? Anyway, so let's do our next one now. Twist these a couple of times down at the bottom here. Get them nicely twisting. Looking good. And again, if your twist work isn't so great, don't worry. It doesn't matter at all. Um, neatness is not so important with this particular design. That's the handy thing about it. Plus, it doesn't need to be central. It doesn't need to be neat. Kay says it reminds me of the sea. Yes, I, I, I get what you mean there. Uh, there's uh, the, the, the color of it is definitely ocean-like. Uh, it's a really, really sort of rich, rich blue that you have. It's kind of like, um, yeah, Afghan, Afghan lapis lazuli. So, you know, the, the thing on the, like the, uh, the blue Egyptian death masks and stuff like Tutankhamun's mask, that rich blue. It's very, very similar. I think this, this one here, <laughs> Andrew says, it's like looking into water. Exactly. He's uh, he's making a joke about when we were on TV, uh, when we because we used to do the Create and Craft TV show back uh, here in the UK a few years ago, and I couldn't think of what I, like the word that I meant. You know how when you're looking at uh, when you're looking across a lake or ac across a pond or something, and how the light reflects really beautifully off the surface of the water. And uh, during my my live show on Create and Craft TV, I couldn't quite express my words to to convey the meaning of how the the sort of the soft rippling of light over the surface of a of a pond or a lake or something like that. And and all I could manage to say, I was like, it's like it's like looking into water, which every obviously everyone was like, that is. What what is he talking about? That's the most ridiculous thing I've heard ever that anyone has ever said when talking about crystal beads. I think I was talking about, but anyway, um, I think I've missed something. I might have to go back, but some comments have been. I've, I've been looking at the comments. I must have missed something, but um, yeah. Any other questions while we're doing that? What other stones do we want to know about? So we have, yeah, as I said, we have the. The sodalite here, which is this lovely blue. The mookite, which is this one here, is a stone I really like. This is one I made um, just yesterday using the mookite. I really, really like the mookite as well. Again, I think I might be a little bit biased because it's an Australian stone. Uh, it was discovered in Western Australia in a place called Mooka Creek. Um, I think it's a few hours from Perth. And they have this gorgeous reds and yellow tones to it. You can get it in all sorts of different shapes and sizes as well, which I think is 
a fantastic thing. But for this particular design, the the chips themselves, because it's quite a hard stone, you've got these really jagged chips. Some of them, like the soda light, give you more rounded chips. See how these ones are quite round and pebble-like? The um the mookite, because it's that bit harder. They're, they're more square in shape. They've got sharper edges. So they look kind of more interesting, a bit more. Um, it's like looking into water. No, um, it's a bit more, I don't know, rough, rough. Rough edged and sort of lovely in that, in its own way. I guess because it's more leaf-like. Having those all those sharper edges in your in your design. So anyway, we're we're already more than halfway through. We're sixty percent of the way through doing this one. Uh, I'm literally trying to blast them out as quickly as I can. Um, so we can sort of just shape them around a bit as we see fit. Then I'll grab my next one over here. Twist these two together. The Kimberley Range, near the western point. Ah, oh, the most western point. Okay. So that's where that one comes from. Some of the others we have, obviously, we everybody knows Amethyst and Rose Quartz. Again, the Amethyst, it's quite hard, so you get these fairly jagged shapes. The Rose Quartz is a little bit more rounded, a slightly softer stone. Um, again, they you can always mix them together. So if you're getting multiples, you could make one which is both purples and pinks together. Could look really, really lovely. Um, Earthy says Heather about the Mookite. Yes, exactly. Which I thought in terms of autumn, especially when you mix it with this gorgeous Botswana agate, which has these gorgeous blue, uh, sorry, blue, dark brown streaks through it as well. It looks really lovely, really rich. The two of them together could be very, very nice. Um, but yeah, there's almost there. Just these final four now. And we've still got plenty of beads left, which is great. So just thread them on as you go. I mean, you can choose them more cautiously if you prefer, or you can just grab them willy-nilly. It doesn't really matter um, which ones you go for. But you do want to make sure that you don't use all of them up before you run out. So here we go. Threading them on. We're getting there. It's looking really good, I think. And maybe two more beads on this one. What do we think? One. Ooh, maybe just a small one. This one here, I think, will do nicely. Through there. So yeah, who has entered the competition, by the way? Has anybody uh, already entered the competition? Just just to, to do the entry part, the registering part. The entrance, uh, the, the actual competition itself, it, we want you to be getting creative and creating something with our microcrystal beads. So there's a lot of different microcrystals on our website. I think we got about... 80 something colors. There's a couple of new colors which I need to put up on the website, about six new ones. I haven't put them up just yet, but they'll be coming very, very soon. Uh, there you go. This is coming together nicely. And I'm going to try and lead this one up here. Maybe I don't want it to be too long. And then this one, I think I might twist them together quite, quite a way to give me a really long branch at the bottom. I think that's going to look really cool. Just keep twisting them. There we go. There, that's giving us a nice tight twist. And I'm going to make this last one quite a long branch, I think. And I might even take it downwards slightly. What do you think? So it's sort of got this curved edge here. So what else have we got? Let's grab a few of these. And pop them on here. What are your thoughts about the shape? Do you reckon I should sort of make it a little bit longer down here? Should it come downwards a bit? Should I keep it more upwards at the top? What do you think? What do you reckon is a better, more sort of intricate, interesting idea? This is the sorts of fun things you can think about while you're doing this. Just to make it 
really sort of exactly how you want it to look. What do you guys reckon uh, there in the chat? Should I do these last two sort of more upwards or should I do them more sort of downwards maybe? What do you think? Like I could put this one sort of over here or maybe I can keep it a bit more bunched. What do we think? There's, there's a lot of different things I need to think about here. Irina says, I've entered. I'm still thinking about what to do. Uh, Renska's entered. Very good. Um, Kay wants me to do them further down, and so does Angelica. So let's do it, both of them. I'll do them both sort of that further down edge. Here we go. One, two. Mm -hmm. One last wrap just here, and we'll cut that one off. So we only have two more to go, but you can see it's really starting to take shape, isn't it? We're getting that tree vibe. It's coming to life. Ironically, tree of life is coming to life. So yeah, I, I think this nice branch, I'm going to bend it. Do you know what? I'm going to make it a little, you'll see. I think you'll like this. I'm going to twist it a bit more so it's longer, but then we've got space to sort of squeeze it downwards. See that? So now have instead of it being like a nice straight shape, you can sort of squeeze everything in a bit, make it a bit more naturally shaped. So this one's going to be like a really long branch. I don't know. We'll see how it looks. Hopefully it will be quite nice. It's a really long one. There we go. And this branch can go sort of maybe one like that and the other. Or maybe I'll put them both sort of curving downwards yeah like this what do we think i think that's a nice idea maybe like that let's try that out so if i just continue i'll grab myself a few more little beads just here let's pop this one on there too and maybe this one it's fun. It's like you can you can design as you go. Uh, my trees are oddly shaped. Yes. Well, do you know what? We actually this uh, this tree, this sort of tree. The more the more we're doing of it, it's reminding me more of a tree of, that I had when I was a kid uh, in our house in Sydney. Uh, we have a really massive Japanese maple tree. So there we go. Let's let's just pop that sort of there. Maybe I'll add, look, you can even squeeze it further just to sort of take up more space so that you've got a little room for one more bead. Let's put this one here, maybe a light one. Or if you're really, really pernickety, you could use your palest ones at the bottom and the darkest ones at the tips if you wanted to. You know, you can, there's a lot of different things that you can do with this. You can really, really play with the design and make it your own. It really starts to grow our tree. There we go. And then we'll just cut this one off. But yeah, like I said, the thing is that even if you are quite the beginner, it doesn't matter. It's so, so simple. And because you can sort of smush things around even afterwards and play with them and whatnot, uh, you can, you can like, make it look really good, even if you are a complete novice. So last one here, and we're done, pretty much. Thread on a few more. Maybe I'll use one of these ones that is a bit more grey-toned. I like these ones. And maybe one big blue one to finish us off. Let's try that out for size, shall we? So we can sort of bring it downwards, see? See that? That one can come almost down here. And that gives us this lovely tree, which, in fact, I might just squeeze that a little bit towards the top. And we'll grab one more bead. One last little bead. Oops. Still got, you know, five or ten left, but this one will do. Just want to smush that into place, and we can wrap that one around. And it allows me to bend this wire 
into that curving shape. See how it comes downwards there? Just to make it exactly how I wanted it. There we go. So don't forget, if you do want to make this, the kit, uh, it makes two pendants from every kit. So that works out uh, in pounds, especially if you get the 20% discount from buying three kits or more, less than five pounds per little tree of life pendant, which if you were going to buy these in the shops, surely you would pay considerably more, especially because it's gemstone. Um, you would find that it's probably going to be more in the region of like, let me just do this nice little loopy bit here. Let's just bend it forwards a bit. Uh, yeah, just because it's gemstones, the likelihood is that if you were going to make uh, buy one of these little fellas, you would probably be being charged considerably more than the price of the kit just to make just to buy one of them. But when you're making it, the kit it'll make two of these bracelet uh, pendants for you or bag charms if you prefer them as bag charms. Um, which this one, because I want to make this one a bag charm, I think let's not attach it to the base so that I can bend it into shape and then it allows me, which I've just realized, did I keep it in my pocket? No, those are my keys. I left the bag charm upstairs. Oh, well. Um, so now let's just bend it into shape and you can see that you can then attach your bag charm piece, which I'm really annoyed because I took such a nice photo of this one as a bag charm. But yeah, you can see as well, you can even make them quite gappy and it works. It looks nice. I think it's a good sort of thing to do. You can play with it. And then once you're happy with it, all you need to do, let me just finish bending this little piece upwards onto our thing here. There we go. And now, if we want to just finalize these positions. So if you are confident with how you want them to look, you can sort of shove it around, get the shape looking exactly how you want it, move these around a bit more. And then to help lock them into place, you can just grab your pliers. And if you have a look at these little coily sections like this, we can just use our pliers and squeeze them really firm at that point. It'll sort of squeeze the wire a little, but it will make it a bit more locked in place. So they don't move around so easily after that. Then we'll lock this one into place as well, which you can use the chain nose pliers as well if you prefer. If you don't have the gripping style, they both work just as well as each other. Give it a good squeeze, and that sort of helps to lock it in place now. See, these ones are sort of locked. These ones still move around. Let's do it again with this one. Let's give it a nice little squeeze exactly where we decide we want it, which this is a good one, I think. Push them together and squeeze that there. There we go. I think these, see, look, this side's pretty sturdy now. It's locked in place. These ones still move around, but essentially you get the gist that if you wanted to lock it into place, all you need to do is just Give it a little squeeze on the loop there, and that'll lock that little coil into place. And now they don't move. See? Pretty much locked in place. So if we zoom out, you can see we've got this gorgeous blue one now, which if you want to have it as a pendant, you can have it as a pendant. If you want to do it as a bag charm, you could do it as a bag charm. These still move as well if you want to reposition them. Until we've squeezed them, they'll move around. So you can make this one come down here if you want to. See how it sort of changes the shape a bit? Or if you prefer it sort of sticking out up there, do it as you see fit. It's entirely up to you how you want them. You can even maneuver them and bend them and make them look more organic or straighter, whatever it is that you want, however it is. And there you go. You have yourself one lovely Christmas decoration suggested there by Jermaine. Uh, you could hang them on like, uh, like a window as well if you wanted to put them up 
on your windows. You could even hang them at the base of like a, uh, a wind chime. That could be a really nice idea as well. Maybe hang it to a wind, ch a wind chime. What other ideas do you have? You could uh, potentially, yeah, like Christmas decoration, wind chime. You could use them as like wine glass charms as well. If you have a like a wine glass charm holder, they'll sort of hang nicely from a wine glass. What else could you do with them? Bag charm, obviously. Uh, the pendant, obviously. What other creative ideas do you all have? You could probably, pre I mean, you could even just display them on the wall. If you had several of them, almost like a tree of life gemstone bunting, maybe. Something like that. Rearview mirror charm, says Stacy. Exactly. That is a very lovely idea as well. But as I said, there are lots of different colors to choose from. There's lots of different ways to use them. You can twist your wire in the beginning if you want to. You can make the, the trunk of your tree more curved, more bendy, bend in one direction, make it more bonsai looking, make them gappy, make them fuller, you know, give more beads, have longer, longer, um, have longer branches, have shorter branches try and make it into your favorite kind of tree. Like this one, funnily enough, looks a bit more like a uh, like a gum tree, an Australian gum tree in the autumn almost. So anyway, there's a lot. There's uh, a plaque, yes, put them into resin as a plaque. Make two and have them as earrings, says Rachel B, which I think that's, they'd be, they'd be some big statement earrings. I think they could be pretty cool, actually. You'd have to be a cool lady, I think. Maybe I'll maybe I'll make two for Maxine. She'd she'd get away with that, I reckon. Uh, a resin coaster, yeah. You could flatten them down. Uh, you could not do the part with the bale, but do them flat and then do resin to turn it into a coaster. Another great idea there. Is there enough wire in the kit to make the twisted base? So we've given you enough wire. You could probably do one of them with the twisted base. So you can still make two pendants or whatever you want to call them, but um, only one of them probably would have enough to do it as a twisted base. We've tried to give you enough so that you can try it out if you want to, but um, I don't think there's, if you're really frugal with your wire, you might be able to twist both of them like this one, um, but the the there's enough to definitely do one and a small one you can make them smaller for earrings yes that is a, a good idea instead of my vegemite jar you could do it with maybe um i don't know something maybe that's about this sort of size what else what's that sort of size maybe like a um the top of like a wine bottle that's probably a bit small you'd probably need something a little bit bigger um heather says the micro crystals would look super shiny through the root system, like in Avatar. You know what? That is a great idea. I use this style for pendants and earrings. Very clever. I like that idea. Um, but yeah, essentially, all if we just recap, all you need to do is make yourself this outer structure with your 1 mil slash 18 gauge wire. Then you use your 0.5 four millimeter or 26 gauge wire. You wrap them, each one, little 30 centimeter pieces around the bottom like this so that you have the middle is attached. Then you meet them in the middle, give them all a twist together, sort of manipulate them to give them a nice root structure shape. Give it a nice trunk shape as well. Um, then you can twist your branches together and then start adding your beads you wrap each one to the end and you're finished. So they are quite quick. They're quite easy. And just to show you all once more, if you wanted to buy them uh, from the homepage, which is also where the link in the description will take you, there's the kits are just here. If you just click view the kit from the homepage, so www.beadspider.co.uk. Jermaine has just said that plastic piping from the hardware store comes in many sizes. Uh, so yeah, if you take this one just here, click view the kit or click the link in the description. There's the four different color options, which here's the, the, uh, the tutorial that we've been watching today. If you just scroll on down past that, down here we have the 
um, Autumn Harvest, which is with the Mookite and the uh, Botswana Agate. That one is very nice. The Enchanted Forest is this one here, which has the Amethyst and the Rose Quartz. This one here uses the Aventurine and the Fancy Jasper. And the one which I've been demonstrating with today, which I can change this photo over here now, is the Sodalite and the Turquoise Howlite color. So you can see the stone just there. It's like a really lovely, rich, bluey turquoise rather than how it kind of looked a bit greeny. But if you want to get any three or more, you can save yourself 20%. But the way you have to do it is by clicking this button here where it says Select Options. So once you're on this page, you can scroll on down. You can say, do you know what? I want to get an autumn harvest one. I really like that mookite. There you go. I'm going to add that to my basket. Then if you scroll on down, you can see it'll say you need to choose at least three. So you can say, do you know what? I want the Moon River. I really like that blue. And I want the Garden of Eden. Those are the three I want. It goes, okay, you can add them to your basket. And you can see just here, 20% discount. Now, if you are from the US or in Europe, up here, you can choose your currency. It will be automatically in your currency, just depending on where you are in the world. So if you're in the US... It will probably be showing in US dollars, but you will get the same discounts. You can make all of your purchases in any of those three currencies. We don't care which one you choose. Whatever is can most convenient for you is the one to use. Um, but yeah, once you have those three, you can add it to basket. If you want to add a fourth one, so you've got all four colors, again, you can see you've got that huge discount, 20% off there. That one's almost a £10 saving which if we look at it in US dollars, just to give you an approximation, um, instead of $15.80, it's $12.64. So essentially, you can make each pendant. So this kit here, if you bought this kit here, you can make this pendant here and this pendant here for $12.64 in total. So that works out at six $6.32 per pendant, $6.32 per little pendant, bag charm. If you want to use resin, turn them into a, uh, a a coaster. You can have them as Christmas trees. All those things that people in the comments were saying you could do. So there you go. Look, uh, if you want to do it in euros, again, we have that as an option too. Just click up there at the top. And then instead of $14.85, they're $11.88 each instead. And then if we go back to pounds, I think it works out less than a fiver. Yes. Look at that. Four four seventy four seventy eight or something four seventy eight per per pendant. So look at that. You could make that. Well, let's show this one. You could make that for four pounds seventy eight and this four pounds seventy eight four pounds seventy eight. They're all four pounds seventy eight for one. Where if you were going to buy one in the shops, I reckon how much do you reckon you'd have to pay for just one pendant? Like fifteen maybe just for that one pendant? I think so. Anyway, that is pretty much it from me for today. Don't forget to go and check out the kits. Comment and let me know which one you like best. If you've never seen us before on our YouTube channel or our Facebook channel, uh, we are, because we're live on both. We have both. I think we're somewhere in the region of about 63,000 people on YouTube now. Um, if you haven't subscribed, go and do that. We have a Facebook group as well. There's loads of links in our description, which I'll also put a link to the competition. If you haven't seen the competition, just go and enter uh, because just by entering, you go in the running to win two sets of 50 pounds uh, of shopping credit to use on our website, uh, which you can use it in whichever currency we don't mind. But anyway, that is pretty much it from me for today. I will be back again in two weeks' time uh, with another fantastic live tutorial. In the interim, though, we will have some good things coming next week as well. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Who have we still got? We have Irina. She said, thanks for the great tutorial. Joanne is here as well. Um, uh, Angelica says, have a great weekend, everybody. Um, Amber has ordered some micro crystals and says she is waiting for them to arrive. So that's exciting for her as well. Um, people are talking about Kumahimo. 
Uh, I have to go and cook for my son, says Renska. She says, thank you, Matthew. It was really nice. Have a lovely weekend. Uh, so thank you for joining us once again. Um, Amber says, would memory wire be strong enough for using in the wire? Just very quickly to answer. You probably could, yes. Memory wire, probably. The problem is you would need to twist the, the tops together, which might be a little bit more difficult with memory wire, but give it a go. There's no harm in it. Um, I'm sure it would work just fine. But anyway, that is it. Moyen is still here. She says, beautiful work. Thank you. Um, Irina says, thanks for the tutorial. Patricia's still here. Thanks. Uh, Christine says, see you in two weeks. Um, Joanne is talking about Kumihimo, I think. And Monica, thanks for the tutorial. And then here we go. Look at that. Large pendants go for $25 here in the US. You could have two of them for uh, under, I think it was under like $12 or something, $13. I can't remember what it was. But yeah, that is a good one. So thank you all very, very much for watching. And then Rachel here says, have a good weekend. See you in two weeks. Well, there will be more between now and two weeks time, but that's the next time I'll be live. So thank you all very, very much for joining me. Have a lovely weekend and keep an eye on the website. There is more things coming next week, but then the next live tutorial will be in two weeks time. Um, and here you go. Look, this is a good one. Edward, I've been making, I've been making along, ordered the kit yesterday to, and it came this morning. Uh, so how good is that? Edward managed to get his kit already this morning, but thank you for joining Edward. I'm glad you could be here. Um, also, actually, I just remembered, uh, who was it? Who was the very first commenter who said, I'm not going to be able to watch, so I'll be here later. Trish Ryan. Trish, if you're still watching when you're watching this in the future, thanks for joining us, even though you're not watching now. And, uh, Thanks, everybody else, for joining me. So, everybody, have a lovely weekend, and I will see you in a couple of weeks' time for the next live tutorial. Thanks very much, and bye-bye.